Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, you're looking at my little tank there, and it is a 24 litre tank, and we're going to be breeding some chili rasboras, okay? These are the ones that I had in my paludarium, which I had in my living room, and I, I've broken that down because the plants weren't very good in there anymore, so I'm going to change those out for something new and tidy that up. But I've got seven in there, I had nine in there, they've been in there for a year since I bought them, and um, we've lost two in all that time. And we've got seven left, and they're in beautiful condition. You can see them there. I've only literally just put them in the tank. Um, so they're a little bit scatty at the moment. They haven't settled in, and it's a lot more um, water in here than, than they were used to in the paludarium. So it was very, very heavily planted in there. And um, But these are absolutely stunning little fish. They're used to the, uh, the little swampy areas, the forest peat bogs and things. Very heavy, rotted down vegetation, very heavily tanned water and the pH in these places can get down to basically about as low as four and um, very very low indeed but you're not going to want to get it down that low for breeding them I'm going to use what you're looking at there now is absolutely pure rainwater at 5.6 okay which I put in there no RO water no condition tap water it's all rainwater okay and that has a pH of 5.6 I've got some oak leaves in there as well now that is going to aid tanning that water up as well and releasing those beneficial antibacterial and antifungicidal properties okay which they hold same as catapa leaves Indian almond leaves and we've got them settled in there now so it's really good so what we're going to do now is we're going to feed these guys up now I've been feeding them on decapsulated brine shrimp and other very very small bits of um, bits of food which I've crushed up like bug bites over the last sort of year and they've been happily feeding away on that but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in some you probably can see a few in there there's some live brine shrimp so I'll put a few in there and I'm not sure if they're gonna if they're gonna go for them but stick a few in there and they'll get blown around and hopefully they'll start to pick them off now they're a very shy little fish now I've got the tank lights are quite light at the moment okay guys because they've they're used to that forest those canopies very very dimly lit areas okay lots of leaf litter in the water falling branches where they're from and all that kind of stuff so they're a very skittish little fish and it was quite dark in my paludarium where I kept them so I've got the lights up basically just for you so you can see them for a minute in fact I can I'll just take it down a few clicks which might encourage them to uh, to come out a little bit more and chill them out of it chill out the chilies and um, Hopefully they'll come out and, and see you. But like I said, these are a super little nano fish, beautifully kept in little tiny tanks with uh, really heavily planted tanks, okay? That's what you want to keep these guys. They're super shy. I wouldn't keep them with anything else because they shock very easily. You've got to be really careful when you're acclimating them into your tank as well because slightly chilly water and can shock them and they can just they can just fall to the bottom dead, okay? So you've got to be really careful. And act, I would acclimate them like you would shrimp. I do it on a drip feed and slowly, slowly bring those temperatures and those parameters up to equal before you put them in the tank, okay? And it's a real shame with these as well because they're quite under threat now in a lot of these places due to palm oil plantations and development and things of that nature. So it's um, it'd be nice if I can teach you guys how to breed these so you can bring on your own. And um, they are, they're not like your neon tetras where they're going to be producing huge amounts of eggs okay they're a super tiny little fish and they're only going to be producing a couple of maybe two or three eggs a day okay that's all they're going to be producing not much more maybe two to three a day but they're daily spawners once they're in condition these guys will spawn every single day now I've got seven in here males are thinner they're more streamlined and normally once they've settled in there the more active ones and dominant males will really show their coloration they'll really pop and uh, you'll see the color and you'll see them being a little bit more bossy where the females tend to be more rounded slightly bigger than the males okay um, but that's really the only sort of characteristics where you can tell them apart obviously when they're younger and they're not up to full size which is only a centimeter about you know 20 mil to max you know 10 to 20 mil maximum so they're a very very tiny fish but like I said, they're only going to lay you a couple of eggs a day. So this is where we've got the problem of 
cultivating and keeping the eggs, okay? Because they will predate on their eggs, but they don't actively hunt for the eggs to eat them, okay? And if you're keeping them well fed, they're, less, they're even more or less likely to do that as well. So what I've got in there is a big clump of, uh, you can either put Java moss, in this case I've got Saswasatang in there, which is a type of, which is a type of moss, if you will, it's not actually a moss, but um, it looks a bit like a moss. And, um, th and they will lay the eggs over that as well. And I've put a lot of leaf litter in there as well, so they can maybe spawn in between the leaves and those eggs will roll down to the bottom and get hidden underneath. Now the eggs are gonna start to hatch after maybe 24 hours, couple of days, some, maybe, you know, between those sort of times. So it's, it's gonna be difficult to try, and if, if, how do I put it? It's gonna be difficult to like hide the eggs and find the eggs. I, I normally go in there with a torch and look look for them, and you can literally turkey baste them out if you see them out in the open on the on the open areas down here. But um, failing that, you can put a mesh screen in there. Okay. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be breeding these. I just want to show you guys how I do it. Even if we get maybe half a dozen babies out of these, I'll be really happy with that. But because um, I don't want to keep breed, breed, breed. So that's my aim. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let them. I'm going to condition them up. They're first light spawners as well, so as soon as you, like you've seen me do on so many of my other videos, if you watch, I'll take the towel off the front, then I'll turn the light on, and then I'll sit there and watch, and you'll see them come together, they'll spawn, you'll see those couple of little eggs drop, and then if you're lucky you can get them out, if you don't want to leave, you can leave them in, but you can do that for a couple of days, and then you can take the adults out, put them back into your main tank, and, um, and you can carry on from there, okay? If you've got a really heavily planted tank, and you can, I mean heavy, really thick moss, where those little babies can hide away, they will do, and you can really put some, you can put the paramecium in there, which is the infusoria, and they'll feed on that, and they'll grow up in the tank. So you can bring them up with the parents as well, but if you wanna get a nice little shoal or up your shoal, that's the best thing is what I'm going to do now, okay? Like I said, you've got two options there. You can use Java moss, you can use a mesh, so the eggs fall through the mesh underneath where the egg, where they'll be safe from the uh, from the parents for eating them, okay? Now, so that's the two options that we've got. Temperature I'm going to put in there is going to be around 28 degrees, 27 between that, uh, 27, 28. And um, that's about it. That's all you need, and you just need... Obviously a cycle filter as well, that's a cycle filter in there. Um, you don't have to have a cycle filter guys if you're just going to put them in there just to spawn them. If you condition them in your main tank first, then you can put them into just a tank full of rainwater up to temperature, let them spawn in there with a mesh, take the, the adults back out, put them back in your tank, and then obviously as these things grow, you can add a filter later on, but they're so small, they put really no effect on the water parameters whatsoever. I just happen to have a sponge filter there, which is cycled, so I put it in there. Very, very low current as well in there, guys. You don't want like a lot of flow. As you can see, that water's just moving. You can just see those little bubbles there moving around, and, um, and you don't want it much more than that because obviously they're used to those little backwaters where it's very, very still and there's not much going on. So you can see the bubbles coming up the tube there are right down to a minimum. So that's what we're gonna do now. So what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna feed these little guys up for about a week. And then, when we come back, hopefully I'll do the old towel trick and hopefully we'll see a spawn, which will be fantastic. And then we can bring up some of these little babies, which is gonna be great fun. Right, okay guys, it's first thing in the morning. Now I've just turned the lights on and they have a little bit spooky. Now, you can see I've added a few more things to the tank. I've added a couple more plants because they weren't really settling because in the other tank that I had them in, it was really heavily planted and they felt a lot safer in there. So I've added some more plants and it's tended to quiet them down a little bit. Now, they have been quite busy. Now, these guys, believe it or not, will spawn at night, early in the morning, in relative darkness. So like a neons will do the same, cardinals will do the same. Like when neons will spawn, spawn first thing in the morning, and your cardinals tend to spawn in the evening, these guys are morning first light spawners. And like I said, they're only going to lay maybe two or three eggs a day, if that. But there's seven in there, so hopefully we've got a good mix. And I think I've got a good mix of males and females in there. So 
we've really just got to keep our eyes open now. Now these are only these are tiny, tiny little fish, and to see these guys spawn is very, very difficult. So I'm going to have to keep my eyes peeled now, and they're super secretive as well. So they are probably going to go behind somewhere. What I tend to do is leave them in there. The last time I bred these guys, I left them in there for for about two days and I kept checking the substrate, I kept moving things around not the substrate, the, 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 the bottom of the tank sorry and I just kept on looking at the bottom of the tank through well in this case I'm going to use my little flipper magnifier there on the side just to keep looking and to see if I can find any eggs that have been deposited and that way what I can do then is I can turkey base them out because what I want to do, I want to leave the, the adults in this tank but I've got that little Senzeal breeder box so what I'm going to do, if I find any eggs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turkey baste them up and stick them on the inside, inside that little breeder box, okay? And I'll let them hatch out in there and I'll feed them the infusoria and everything they need when they first hatch. So that's the game plan. So what I'm going to do now, this is obviously a time lapse -y sort of video, so it's going to maybe jump a couple of days ahead and um, they could do, or they could, they could go this morning, I don't know. But at the moment they're right in the back in the left I'm sorry in the right hand corner there and where I've got the tripod set up it's going to be very difficult for me to get in and have a look and see where they are so I'm going to keep my eyes open on these guys and watch them for a while have a coffee chill out feed the rest of the fish let them get used to the morning light coming in get that little bit of stress out of the way, feel a bit more comfortable. I'll put a couple of brine shrimp in there as well, freshly hatched ones, that sometimes that'll get them going like a lot of other videos that I've done. Well we shall see. The, the other plants that I put in there, I've got a java fern in there and a, and a sword, an Amazon sword as well, which I've trimmed a lot of the old dead off, as you can see the, on the edges of the leaves there, the way they've been cut. Now I'm not sure if I just saw a little couple together there, right in the back. Because they're very, very busy in that bottom corner, if you can see that. And they've congregated right down in that corner, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's where they're going to go, if they do. Like I've said in other videos, guys, as well, I tend to find when the heater clicks on, you'll find they'll spawn sometimes up here mid-water above the heater with that slightly warm water is raised is rising up now as I said in earlier on in the video this is just pure rainwater in here okay that's got a pH of 5.6 it's got to be quite low for these guys okay 5 to 5.6 like I said in the wild it can get down to as low as 4 but these are have been kept the thing is with these, I've kept these guys in my paludarium and I've used just normal conditioned tap water in there and that's got a pH of around 7. So they've been used to that pH of 7 and you'll find a lot of that in people's homes, aquariums, home aquariums where it's 7, 7.5 or whatever. So it's, it's quite easy to get that rainwater and drop it down or use RO water like in my other videos and just drop that, do half. Half, drain half of your water out of your tank if you want to breed it in your main tank, fill it up with rainwater if you've got a small tank or RO water and that will lower that pH for you. And just make it very very still, especially for these guys, well for most small um, little charisons and different fish I keep it very very low. Now they're playing around that Sabwasa tank as well, little one popping out there. And they are super colourful, they really are. That's definitely a male there, you can see the way, see how colourful he is. Now he's actively looking for the girls there, I think, the way he's acting. He's showing that dominance, that zipping around. And that's what they do. The other guys are still in the, in the other corner there. Now he's going to maybe make his way back there. I don't know. But it's really interesting to watch. And this is all part of it for me, guys. This is the bit I love. It's watching the fish... It's creating that habitat for them, watching them, and when it, when it all works out right, you know you've done it right, you know, and like I said, get your little books out, and write things down if you're going to do them, or keep a breeding room, 
because that's what I've done for years. I can go back on my little books and I can look through my old breeding recipe books and say, ah, that's what I did, I remember now. That took me about a month to get that right, but just by doing that slight little difference, it triggered that spawn. And you can write these things down, and that's the whole point, that's the whole fun, is learning yourself, learning the way that you do it. And when you crack it, it's like, brilliant, I've done it. Still in that corner. Yeah, they're coming to see you now. They're a stunning little fish, they really are. If you want a peaceful little tank, these are the guys to go for. Them and their little other cousins. You get the little blue ones as well, the blue neons, uh, the blue rasboras as well. They're beautiful little fish too. be lovely if they spawned right in the front there and that's, this is the sort of activity that you get that chase 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 like you've seen on so many of my other breeding videos and then suddenly you'll get a little couple of eggs will be released maybe two or three and that's all these guys are gonna that's all they're gonna produce but they're gonna do that every day anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back I'll have a look around and I'll see if I if there's anything in there and I'll let you I'll bring you in on it and show you it okay all uh, right guys well we've got a spawn i missed it sadly <laughs> but um they came up in the water column here and i've looked around the back there and they must they must have spawned last night as well or early this morning when the the towel was still over the tank so what i've done is i've had my little turkey baster and i've i've put it in in the corner okay through the lid there and i've just puffed a few to the front and we've got a few if you can see right there in the middle of the screen amongst the uh, there you go there's some tiny little pearls there and there's a lot of freshly hatched brine shrimp around them as well i can't see any oh there's another one there i think that's where most of them are how many have we got there we got one two three four five six seven eight oh we've done quite well they may have laid a couple yesterday as well. But like I said, I've got seven in there, so... Here's the little culprits. All swimming around still. But I'll leave them in there now, because they're out in the open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there, because I'm going to take these out, I think. And... Um, I'll put them in the little sends you a box and I'm going to stick it in the tank so you can see them in there okay right okay I've got them in the turkey baster I'm just going to invert that turkey baster now and hopefully you'll see these little eggs drop back in and I think yeah I've just seen a few come out just want to blow them very very slowly because They're going to, I don't want them to go back through. There's a couple there, I think, just come out. The slits are very, very fine in these boxes, but these eggs are absolutely minute. So, right, there you go. Now we can have a look, see what we got. Ah, there they are. <laughs> They're so hard to see. There's one there. Another one over on the other side, on the right hand side there. The couple there. They're very, very hard to see. We've got a couple around the place. Anyway, we've got some in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave these guys in here now and they're going to hatch out. I'll put a nice piece of uh, moss in there so they can hide in amongst that, I think. Yeah, the great thing about these little boxes is they're laser cut from the in from from the outside in so if you can look you can see a few more eggs there oh that's a better shot i can see a few more now as well but you can see the way that laser has cut its way in from the outside in so it's left a very very minute little slice right up in the top in the center it's basically like an arrow slit in a castle um if you can if you're familiar with those the way it goes wide on the inside and small on 
the in, sorry on the outside you when they look through they can shoot arrows through but it's very difficult to to shoot back in through the little slit and that's basically what they've done here which is a very clever little design because the other ones I've seen tend to uh, the fry swim straight out of them but so you can see how small these eggs these are microscopic little eggs they really are tiny I'll see how close I can get oh that's not too bad you can see that tiny little embryo in there it's three eggs there four five six I think it's about six about maybe seven or eight total well, some in the back as well over there as well I'd say maybe ten we got about ten eggs in total there from that little gang which is perfect so I'll get back to you guys when these are hatch. Anyway guys, as always your stars, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching this little part one of how to breed chili rasboras. Hope you enjoyed it. Tune in for part two. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell for up and coming videos. And you'll be kept in the loop. As soon as one pops up, a new video pops up, you'll be notified, okay? Anyway, as always your stars, love you loads, take care, and I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar